restless and a little breathless and getting ready for sights and sounds. Weightless like this. you think about me and how we would soon go round and round like floating flowers like roses and sparkles spinning in spirals we got rained on and it was glorious midnight owls singing stories for us When you think about me and how we would sing around and around. Hey everybody, look at this. The first signs of spring. Little yellow flowers here in the Adirondacks. And here is a teeny tiny tree. Can you see this little tree? I think it just started growing in this log, this mossy log. And these green plants will be daylilies. They're wild, I guess. They probably spread from other plantings. But they are very hardy up here in the mountains. And they're all over in the summertime. It's really great. Aha! Uh -huh. If you saw my video, A Day in the Life of a Songwriter, Episode 2, this is where we made the fire together. This spot here. All that's left are these ashes. <laughs> it just reminds me that this used to be feet of snow. I think a beaver chewed this a long time ago. You can see the teeth marks. And then it finally fell. He or she might have carried it right to that water there. Hey everybody. I hope everything is well with you. It is finally spring here in the northern hemisphere. <laughs> and I can't say that it's been really hard winter. It just drags out sometimes. I love winter. I do also like the change of seasons. So I'm very glad that spring is here. Today, I want to give you an update of all the things that are happening here in songwriter land, in the Adirondacks, in upstate New York. Basically, it's full speed ahead. There are so many great things happening, so many fun things happening, especially since the pandemic I'd like to say it's a little under control. It's certainly more under control than it was two years ago. Everybody's still being very careful around here, maybe near you too. That's one thing that is a strong consideration for me in terms of the number of shows that I do or the, the public shows that I do and where the shows might be. The great thing about spring and summer is that the shows can be outdoors, so that's so much better. One thing I really focused on this winter was to develop my online uh, resources. I really developed my Facebook and my Instagram and my YouTube is growing. I am so grateful for that. A lot of people joined. People are putting in the watch minutes. That's how they judge you <laughs> on YouTube is how many minutes people have watched your channel. 
last month I think was 636 minutes on my channel, which is so great. I love seeing that. I, I love being able to connect with everybody through videos. Also on my Patreon, I had some people join in. Love that. I want as big a group as possible with a Patreon with lots of communication, discussion. I do about three posts on my Patreon each month. Uh, Patreon is a website where artists can post their work and people can subscribe to their work. And it, it, the great thing is it's pay what you wish. It's a wonderful way for artists these days to get their work into the world and to their listeners or viewers. And right now, I, it's just so much fun. So I hope you take a look, actually. There's some things on my Patreon page that have that are free, that are open for anyone to see. So it's patreon.com backslash Cosby Gibson. A really big project this autumn. There's an historic site on the Hudson River called Olana Historic Site. Olana is the name of a mansion that a famous artist built in the 1800s. It was James Frederick Church. He's of the Hudson River School. And they asked me and my duo partner Tom Stottle to do songwriting class. So when I heard that, I'm thinking, okay, songwriting class, we actually have done that before, no problem. They wanted eight weeks, <laughs> an eight week course, which is super exciting. We, I, I was also like, wow, eight weeks, okay, all right, let's sit down and think about this. So basically we've been working with Olana. We've sort of been uh, dividing up the weeks into topics. Uh, we, do, we do genres, we do uh, you know jazz, folk, whatever. Each, uh, each little week has its own theme. It's turning out so well. And that starts in September and it goes, uh, there's a, it skips a couple weeks in there, but it's uh, eight weeks across a few months there. And um, it's Olana historic site. And I'm so excited about it. One of the weeks involves looking at one of Church's paintings and writing a song based on the, one of the paintings that you choose in, in the museum there. So it's going to be really, really fun. This year marks the 13th year of my songwriting journey. I've been full-time for about six or seven years. And I'll tell you, one advantage is at this point, I have a lot of things that I need. I have the sound system that I need. I have the instruments that I need, this camera, everything. It's, I, it's really great to have that thing, those things available. Of course, all this new equipment comes up that you say, oh wow, that's so cool, I, I, I want that, whatever. There's one thing that I'm gonna try to uh, aim for in the budget <laughs> is a camera stabilizer. It's, it's a, it's kind of swings, it's a stick, right? And then you put the camera there or the phone and as you move, it will swing like a shock absorber as you move. I think it's really important. A lot of the videos that I make, if I'm walking, they will kind of jiggle a little bit and it's hard to watch sometimes. Um, I've tried to reduce that quite a bit. Those were in the earlier videos that I was like all over the place. So that's one thing I'm gonna to try to aim for this year is a stabilizer really easy piece of equipment, isn't it? And um, so that will be great. Around November or December, I wrote a song called The Battle of the Gingerbread People. And it was supposed to be for the holidays. And you guessed it, it's a battle of gingerbread people. <laughs> After I wrote the song, it was so, um, it was such a storytelling song that I thought it would make a great children's book. And I've talked about this in other videos and I also actually finished the cover for it because I also draw and paint. So I finished the cover for it. There is a video on my YouTube channel that shows me painting that cover. So this summer I look forward to creating more of the paintings and I'm hoping to have the book out around the holiday time, whether it's this holiday or next holiday. We shall see, but I think it'd be such a great holiday book and it's a really sweet message. So the battle of the gingerbread people. And as with most songwriters, they're usually working on an album. I am working on an album. It's coming very slowly, which is fine with me. It's called Music, Art, Love. I think I have about five songs for it now. 
it's probably, I, I wanted to come out this year, but it's probably going to be next year just because I, I, I feel fine just taking my time with it. I would actually like to include a lot more songs than I usually do. I think I usually have about from 12 to 15 songs. It would be great to have maybe 20 songs if I could on this. And I usually include videos, the song videos with it. One of my projects that is probably really long term is an artist colony. It's not really a commune or anything. It would be here in the Adirondacks. I've talked about this before. Every time I talk about it or think about it, it reduces down and down <laughs> into a simpler project because I realize more and more how complex it could be or it could become, especially when it comes to living quarters. And you know, you have sanitation, you have garbage, you have uh, the codes, the laws of the area, um, how many acres are you gonna need and all this stuff. So it's, it, it does keep focusing down, but I still wanna do it. Basically, I've gone from buying property and putting lots of tiny houses on there <laughs> and having people come, artists come and stay and do their work in, up here in nature whether you're a writer, musician, author, whatever. And I went from all the little tiny houses down to campsites, sort of like a glorified campgrounds, really. And then I realized, you know, I would probably be more of a property manager than an artist at that point. So my idea for now is to have the property, maybe have electricity on it, and any artist who can come, who is what they called self-contained, which means they either have a camper or they have a tent with their own kind of toilet situation, basically primitive camping, nothing supplied except for maybe electricity. And certainly I would think a main meeting house where people could meet, but you would come into your own spot and you would stay there, you're on your own. <laughs> If, if, if it snows, you shovel it, if it, if it uh, you know, whatever, and you take out your garbage and everything. And I think that that, that would really be easiest on everybody and, and maybe even more pleasant for a camper type person to have, to know that they have all their own um, amenities with them. The idea is for artists to have a place to go and also to talk with each other and kind of bounce ideas off each other and just be with other artists and most definitely to be up here in the Adirondacks. Perhaps you would be a city dweller or you just wanted to come up and uh, be in another area. I'm hoping that if there was an entrance fee, that it would be very low. Possibly if there were grants or donations that that would possibly, the artist wouldn't have to pay at all, which would be really great. So there's more to think, I guess, about for all that. but. Like I say, every time it develops into something new, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. It's gonna get done. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. And finally, for the van, the music touring van, there are two things that need to be done. One is that the passenger seat needs a headrest. There's no headrest whatsoever. That's like whiplash, like whiplash right there. No, we need a headrest. And the top of the van, the cap that goes on the top of the van, there's three places now that have drips, water drips. So I'm hoping that's gonna be an easy solution. Probably just sort of some sort of caulking or rubber. I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna to have to lift off the whole cap and redo the whole seal, or if it can just be patched, that would be great. But that's something that needs to be attended to because there are little puddles of water in there at this point, <laughs> and we don't want that. Well, that's it for now. That's my life update. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below because I love hearing your insights and your thoughts and suggestions. And if you're interested in joining the Patreon, I would love to have you in the group. It's all online and you receive the three creations each month through uh, the Patreon website and you're notified in your email. So it's really easy, really fun. It helps support me and it helps get my work out there and everybody has a great time. That's patreon.com backslash Cosby Gibson and I hope to see you soon maybe at the shows and I hope you're having a great day
to think about.